I think we're ready. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to view this quick video of uh, my assistant. My name is Larry James. My company is Speak with Larry, no spaces. And what my company does is teach you how to set up the foundation of an online business while assisting you becoming more comfortable speaking about it. But during this process, I'm creating a 90 day course or 90 day process that is actually what my system is that teaches you how to set up your own system while I'm teaching you about the stock market because that's something that I had an interest in learning about. So I've completed uh, one course and I've completed the, which would be the beginner course and I've completed the intermediate course. This course is actually the advanced course. This is gonna be more uh, hands-on, if you will, or really wrapping your mind around the actual process of understanding the stock market, which is the same way you wanna do your course based on the knowledge that you have. As you uh, start creating content, you don't want your most valuable content in the beginning, you want your most valuable content in the end so that you're able to uh, you know, market that at a different price point. Because it's about you know creating a, a way of life for yourself based on your you know your creative uh, abilities and your understanding of how this process actually works. So today I'm going to title this uh, "What Owning a Stock Actually Means." Now again, this is based on the stock market. So what I'm going to talk about today is in line with the stock market. But if you're viewing this from an online course that I created. I appreciate you investing in yourself because that's very important that you, um, you know, not just invest time, but you also invest money because you learn from different, we learn from different people based on, you know, their knowledge and their experience or their expertise. And sometimes you can just take one or two little morsels or nuggets out of what's being said, and that can change the whole direction of your, your um, process, right? And that's what you want. So with that being said, I'm going to start uh, this one again. What owning a stock actually means. Now, most people realize that owning a stock means buying a percentage of ownership in the company. But many new investors have misconceptions about the benefits and responsibilities of being a shareholder. Many of the misconceptions stem from a lack of understanding of the amount of ownership that each stock represents. For large companies such as Apple and ExxonMobil, one share is merely a drop in the pond. Even if owning, even if you owned a million dollars worth of shares, you'd still be a small potato with very little equity in the company. So what does this mean? Let's take a look at three of the biggest misconceptions about being a, stock, a shareholder. Misconception number one, I am the boss. First off, you're better off not thinking that you can bring your share certificates into the corporate headquarters to boss people around and demand a corner office. As the owner of the stock, you placed your faith in the company's management and how it handles different situations. If you are not happy with the management, you can always sell your stock. But if you are happy, you should hold on to the stock and hope for a good return. Furthermore, next time you are pondering whether you're the only person worried about a company's stock price, you should remember that many of the senior company executives, insiders, if you will, probably own as many, if not more shares than you do. This isn't a guarantee that the company's stock will do well, but it is a way of companies to give their executives an incentive to maintain or increase the stock's price. Now, insider ownership is a double-edged sword though, because executives may get involved in some funny business to artificially increase the stock prices and then quickly sell out their personal holdings for profit. So that's something you must be mindful of. And even though you can't directly manage the company with your stocks, vote for the directors who can if your stock has voting rights. These are the people who typically hire upper management 
which hires lower management, which hires subordinate employees. Thus, as an owner of common stock, you do get a bit of a say in the controlling and shape and direction of the company, even though this say doesn't represent direct control. Got it? Okay, now misconception number two, I get a discount on goods and services. Nope, another misconception is that ownership of a company translates into discounts. Now, there are definitely some expectations, I'm sorry, some exceptions to this rule. Berkshire Hathaway, for example, has an annual gathering for its shareholders where they can buy goods at a discount from Berkshire Hathaway's hail companies. Typically, however, the only thing you get with the ownership rights of a stock is the ability to participate in the company's profitability. Why would it hurt for you to get a discount? Well, this answer can get a little complicated. After some thought, you probably will not want that discount. Let's look at it from this example. Let's say Ben's Chicken Restaurant, owned by Ben and a couple of his friends, and Corey's Brewing Company, owned by millions of different shareholders. Because only a few people own Ben's Chicken Restaurant, the discount would only be a small portion to the restaurant income and revenue, which the owners would bear. Now, for Corey's Brewing Company, the loss in income and revenue would also be borne by the owners, the millions of shareholders. Since revenue is the main driver of stock prices and the loss from a discount would mean a drop in stock prices, the negative impact of a discount would be more substantial for Corey's Brewery. So even though an owner of stocks may have saved on a purchase of the company's goods, he or she would lose on the investment in the company's stocks. Thus, the discount isn't nearly as good as it initially sounds. And the third misconception is, I own the chair, the desk, the pens, the property, etc. Nope, not that easy. As an investor in a company, you own a portion of the company, no matter how small that portion is. However, this doesn't mean that you own property of the company. Let's go back to Ben's Chicken Restaurant and Corey's Brewing Company. Quite often, companies will have loans to pay for property, equipment, inventories, and other things needed for operations. Let's assume Ben's Chicken Restaurant received a loan from a local bank under certain conditions whereby the equipment and property are used as collateral. For a large company like Corey's Brewing Company, the, loan, the loans come in many different forms, such as through a bank or from investors by means of different bond issues. In either case, the owners must pay back the debtors before getting any money back. For both companies, the debtors, in the case of Corey's Brewing Company, this is the bank and the bond holders have the initial rights to the property, but they typically won't ask for their money back while the companies are profitable and show capacity to repay the money. However, if either of the companies become insolvent, the debtors are first in line for the company's assets. Only the money left over from the sale of the company's assets is, just, is distributed to the stockholders. So, what I'm trying to say is the bottom line is hopefully I've been able to dispel any misconceptions that some stockholders have about the powers of ownership, right? Now, the next time you think about taking out, taking your stock certificates into your nearest McDonald's to get a discount on a Happy Meal or attempt to fire the employee after refusing to give it to you and then finally walk out in disgust with a McFlurry machine, <laughs> you should remain, you should remind yourself of the common misconceptions about ownership powers. Now, those things like that, that's information that you need to know 
before you purchase your stocks because once you put your process together about how you want to go about investing in the stock market you need to know what's available to you what what buying a stock get what what give what that gives you what rights that gives you and those three i just named are misconceptions about when you invest in a stock that is not what you get right now i want to take a, just a minute uh, or two to share some information with you about this process that you're going through especially if you're doing this from a course that i've created uh, one of the things that's necessary for you to understand is that all this is a process none of this is just add water and poof you get the results no you have to go through the process based on whatever you decide to whatever you decide will be your subject that you're going to share content or information about you need to understand that in order for it to work you need to create for yourself a proof of concept right now when you do that you're going to create like for this process i'm creating three videos not three videos three online courses with about 10 videos each right now each of those videos are titled they're uh, in line with the topic that i'm talking about and they're br they bring value to the viewer or the listener right that's what you want in the beginning since you're new to it you're only going to be able to do maybe uh two to five minute videos which is cool because you're not going to put a high price point on it initially right because this is a process so you're not going to be real good in the beginning you're going to be nervous you're going to be you're going to look at yourself on film and say well that's not i don't like that view or i don't like that this or there's too much this in the background because all those things are what's going to make you an expert you're going to be able to pick out really quickly moving forward what works and what doesn't work, right? When I create these videos, I've been doing this for over 10 years now. So when I create my videos, no editing. I require zero editing, especially for a little short process like this, because all I'm doing is creating products. And I understand very well how to create products. I'm also, I'm also a published author of several books designed to teach people how to set up the foundation of their online business. So I know this stuff right i don't need uh to keep referring back to this or that to be able to articulate what it is that you need to do in order to get your system up and running right but there are going to be little glitches along the way for you don't let that deter you don't let that stop you because that's part of it you know uh, there's a quote that said when you fail you learn and when you learn you improve and when you improve you grow Think about that the next time you're going through something. Failing is part of it. Learning is part of it. But that's what differentiates you, you and your abilities from the next person who doesn't do that, right? If they're not doing anything or just criticizing, then they're not gonna get the results or any results. You're gonna get the results as long as you continue to move the needle. Don't try to get it all in one bite, you know, like, there's also a quote that says, how do you eat an elephant? Small bites, small portions, right? You can't take big bites or eat big portions. No, you'll never get it done. But if you take little small bites, it may take you a long time, but that's how you do it, right? Same way with setting up your system or your business or your company, which is what I want you to be able to set up. And uh, I've also created some online courses to assist you with setting up your online business is called DIY, uh, setting up a small online business, uh, do it yourself, if you will. And it's based on the same concept that I'm using right now, because this concept works, it works. Plus, you get, up, you get the opportunity to get better, you get the opportunity to generate an income while you're doing this. Because one of the things you can do is uh, post links that are affiliates that you that you're an affiliate for, like Amazon, eBay, or different places like that that have affiliate systems. And when you create a video like this, you can also put a link there. And when someone goes to that link and clicks on that link and purchases something, then you get a, a percentage of the purchase price, right? 
really simple to do, but you're also going to create an email list. This whole process is going to require you to create an email list. So you're going to be uh, creating uh, opt-in, what's called opt-in forms that's going to allow people to, you know, put the name and email address in and get on your email list. And when they get on your email list, you send them emails once a week, twice a week, however regularly you want to do that, but you're establishing a relationship with these people, right? People buy from those they know, like, and trust. So as they're getting your videos, as they're getting your emails or text, whatever you're sending them, they're going to be establishing, well, that's Larry. Uh, I'm going to see what Larry's got this week. Let's see what Larry's got next week, right? And then they're going to get to know me, and then when I put a offering like once i create these products then i just send them a link to be able to access these products simple as that now that's going to help them basically understand how to start a business and i'm more about the stock market because that's that's the title of this uh segment that i'm doing and i'm doing this march april and may of 2021 uh, once these are completed on to the next one right remember these are products that i'm marketing as I create them, let's say the first product I created was $20. The second one was $37. The third one, I'm gonna put a price point, I think of about $55, $55 or so. And then I'm gonna combine all three and I may sell those for 80 or $90. So you gotta realize that's money being generated, right? That's Those didn't exist until I created them. It, it come from here. Then I put it in a process and package it. And that's what you're going to do. And it's all done from the comfort of your own home or your office, wherever you have an office. And you can even do them outside. Just be different. You can be creative. That's one of the uh, selling points of making a lot of these types of uh, systems is that you get to use your creativity. And your creativity, who knows? People may just automatically gravitate to that. Right? Hopefully they will. But anyway, with that being said, I really appreciate you uh, again investing in yourself and purchasing my course. And I guarantee you're going to get a lot more if you stay tuned. And I appreciate your effort in wanting to get better at what you're doing or wanting to learn this process. All right. Okay. So with that, my name is Larry James. My company is Speak with Larry, no spaces. And as always, say it with me, share with someone else what I've shared with you.